Can this cap out cap this cap to become the cappiest cap to ever bust a cap in? All right, I'll stop. Sorry about that, I get a little carried away sometimes, but this is ribeye cap steak. At least this is the ribeye cap steak that you're used to seeing. If you've watched the channel before, you know that this is one of my favorite steaks. It is the undisputed king. It is the most tender, most juicy, most flavorful cut of beef, whether I cook it on a Kamado cooker or even whether I cook it in the uh, wood-fired oven. But I got a theory that I might've been doing it wrong. So we've been doing all of this, like roll it up and kind of cook it like a filet and then cut it up and eat it. But recently I've been experimenting with this idea that the last cut being against the grain is actually the best way to make a steak the most tender and juicy. If I was gonna do that with these, I need to like turn it on its side and slice this way in order to serve it, which is not the way that we eat these. I've got this piece here that was rolled up right next to these as part of the same piece from which they were cut. But this one we're gonna cook flat and these we're gonna cook rolled up the traditional way to do ribeye cap steak. So why do I have two of these rolled up? Well, because to do this test properly, I really need to do the traditional way where we cook this and cut it this way. Also do one that I cook rolled up, but then I unroll and cut against the grain. And then this new way where I'm gonna cook it with the whole thing the whole time being intending to cut it against the grain like this. I'm not gonna cut it like this because that's gonna be tough. I'm gonna cut it against the grain. So I started this yesterday where I actually took this ribeye cap that I cut off of a USDA Prime G1 certified whole prime rib from Meat and Bone as part of a video that I made about the right way to trim a ribeye now that we know that the last cut should be against the grain for ribeye steaks. That's where we came up with that idea of the al eye. But this idea of the ribeye cap and being able to make the perfect steak even better, I hope I'm right. I mean, this could be pretty cool if I'm right. So to prepare these, I'm not gonna do anything really fancy. I'm just gonna use water as a binder for pepper to stick to. Yesterday, when I was trimming this, I actually dry brined it, which means that I took salt and applied it to the whole surface of these, as well as a couple other steaks, because I'm filming a couple of steak videos today. So I don't need to salt it, but all I'm gonna do is put some pepper on here. It's gonna be the only seasoning we're using is pepper because the salt is already in there. Now, when I dry brine, I put the salt in, I use about a teaspoon of salt per pound of meat. Then I put them on this tray and I let it sit overnight for that salt to absorb into the steak where it tenderizes and breaks down the fibers and gets that salt flavor all the way to the middle. So the only thing we need on the surface is this little bit of pepper. So to track the cook and make sure that we're cooking them to exactly the right temperature, I'm gonna be using the meter thermometers. I've got this meter block here that allows me to connect over Wi-Fi, and that way I can keep track of the cook without having to sit out here. So I'm gonna take meter probe number one, and I'm gonna put it right into this ribeye cap going right below the line to protect the internal thermometers. I'm gonna put meter two into the second traditional rolled ribeye cap steak. And then meter three, I'm gonna put into this thin cap and I'm gonna get as close to the center as I can. Now meter does have, by the way, a new meter two plus probe that is thinner and better for these thinner steaks. I can't use that for this, because I'm actually filming the first cook for a review of that thermometer and uh, the steak is already on the smoker. So we say we get these on the grill. Remember I told you about that meter two plus test? That's this steak right here. So that video has already been out for a couple of weeks so you can find it on the channel if you want. So I'm gonna put my ribeye cap right here and then I'm gonna put my traditional ribeye caps kind of next to each other, right next to it. And we're gonna let these start cooking. So I'm gonna set up cook. I'm gonna choose beef, steak. It doesn't know from a ribeye cap, so I'll just choose ribeye. Really what I want is to get this down to 115 degrees because we're gonna reverse sear. So we're gonna smoke it here, pull it at 115, and then we're gonna sear it off. So let's go ahead and start that cook. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on the other ones. And I'll be back when these get to 115 degrees. All right, the app is telling me that my flat ribeye cap has reached that 115 degrees. So I'm gonna pull it out, wrap it in foil, and let this rest until its friends are ready. 
Okay, our traditional ribeye caps have reached 115 degrees. All right, I'm gonna let these rest with the other ribeye cap. And once all these steaks are off, I'm gonna set up for searing and you're not gonna wanna miss that. All right, so I'm gonna start by spreading out my coal bed a little bit in here, because I wanna build a wider fire that's gonna come across my firebox. So I wanna get this fire rip roaring hot and burning all the way across. I've got this expandable grate that I'm gonna put right across the opening of the firebox and let that get good and hot while the fire builds. All right, Nick. The epic conclusion to the Steakapalooza trilogy. I'm telling you. So <laughs> guys, so you guys understand what this last couple of days has been like. We butchered a whole prime rib. We cooked a rack of lamb for steak lovers. We did a test to see if the new way of cutting ribeye could actually Regain the throne Regain with the throne and be the almighty Picanha. Yeah, we know how you feel about Picanha. <laughs> we introduced the meter two plus, oh, which that's can right. actually seal things at super high temperatures. Yeah, the reward for all of this is the actual king of steaks. The undisputed actual king of steaks. It's kind of a miracle it comes off of a cow. It's crazy. All right, so these two were cooked the traditional way. Right. This one I'm going to cut into and eat the traditional way. Okay. This one, I'm going to unroll so it looks like this and see kind of what the experience is. Okay. And then this one that I'm predicting is going to be, I think the technical word is the shizzle. <laughs> We're going to taste last and see. And you be honest with them. Like if I'm up... Oh, 100%. Okay. All right. I will be honest. All right. And for those of you who are wondering, Nick is a Marine. Marines don't lie. Thank you again for my freedom. Are you You're ready? welcome. Are you ready? Yes. All right. So I'm just going to cut this right in half. Let's right. unroll this guy. You want to taste this? them as quickly in succession as Right possible. next to each other. Okay, so I'm going to pull the butcher's twine off of here while that plane flies overhead. It's all right. And kind of give it, it kind of looks a little, but if I turn it over like this, I guess. That looks. That looks better, right? So this is the same as this. So let's take this piece here. Right, cheers. 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 Tall order to beat that. That's, That's the best thing I've had today. Now this one was rolled up this way, so the, so the grains are running, grains this, are running this way. Oh, okay. Right. I'm gonna just cut it in half here and see. All right, looks okay. Are you ready? Cheers, cheers. You still like this one? I like that one better, and it's probably because the way that we cut through that, I got a lot more of the outside char, which is my thing. Yeah, that's so. true. You do like that Maillard, but I guess technically there's the same amount. It is. It's just in that particular steak. body. All right, here I'm gonna get here. Take 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 this one and just right. see if that competes. Oh yeah. Still, I'm going that still, way. Still okay. So you're still sticking with traditional. So this is Al's idea of, and the grains are running this way. Right. So. Look at those juice. Look at that. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. This one definitely tastes better because it got more of that Maillard reaction on the outside right. of it, which I love. This one's more tender. It really is. That one is. This is a thing now, right? Like we've known it for brisket. We've known it for big cuts. We've been cutting against the grain as the last cut every time. And that's the most tender. And we've been ignoring it for steak. Well, the Brazilians know it. The Brazilians know it, right? So we take what we learned from them from Picanha. I think we've proven. I think without, you know, beyond a reasonable doubt that doing it this way, cutting against the grain as the last cut makes it the most flavorful, delicious steak that you could yeah. have. Yeah, yeah. And I think the other thing that we've proven after eating lamb chops made for steak lovers mm -hmm. and two allies steaks and a picanha steak and three ribeye cap steaks is that our job is better than anybody else's yep. job. <laughs> we win. You could win if you watch this video. Show what video to watch right next. There. Watch that one next. It's probably a steak video. Probably. <laughs> and we'll see you next time on Eat, Eat More, More Vegans. Vegans.